the deathbed narcissist. The upper lesser type A. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Regular students of my work know that I have created a comprehensive classification system that details the different subschools of narcissists to help you in identifying the narcissist that you have an involvement with and also to enable you to understand the similarities between the subschools and also the differences, common threads and different methods of operation and thought. As part of this, I have created the series The Deathbed Narcissist to allow you to understand not only more about how the particular subschool of narcissist functions and operates, but also to answer that question. What is the response of a particular narcissist when they stand on the cusp of their death? Utilising an entertaining storytelling format, I have already explained about the situation for the lower lesser and the middle lesser. You can find those videos by searching for them. Now we turn to an exploration of the upper lesser type A. This will help you understand more about the general behaviours, demeanour and outlook of the upper lesser type A and of course this particular type of narcissist's reaction to impending death. Whoa! Quite the sight, I agree, remarked a hollow voice, which seemed to circle and eddy the listener. What an explosion, man! Look at the flames! remarked the man excitedly. He was stood up in the cockpit of the expensive speedboat as orange flames surrounded him. The yellow and orange of the flames was fixed, frozen, creating a tableau of different shades of orange and yellow. Ochre, pumpkin, tangerine, amber, carrot and lemon were entwined, bleeding into one another, a wall of suspended flame which surrounded the gawping man in its midst. The man pushed his hand towards the wall of flames. His action was not tentative, but performed by someone who leapt and never lurked. His hand dipped into the flaming morass, but he gave no cry of pain, no scream of agony, but instead retrieved his hand and stared at it wide-eyed and impressed. "'Check that out!' he declared, as he lifted his unscathed hand up and examined it for injury. "'I am flame-resistant! That is so awesome! I'm like something from the Fantastic Four! Hey, man, did I do this? Can I do it again?' he asked fizzing with excitement as he gesticulated at the flames. Yes and no, came the answer. It was then that the man suddenly realised that he was actually having a conversation with someone rather than talking to himself. He turned and saw the tall, dark figure stood beside him. The figure was lean and imposing, a midnight black hooded cloak hid what lay within. She yet Who are you? asked the man. His question was neither aggressive nor fearful, but rather one of excited curiosity, akin to a child trying to fathom out how a particularly impressive magic trick had been performed. My name is Death. Death? As in, the death? The one and the same, came the level reply. How fucking cool is this? Great to meet you, Mr. Death. Let's have it up top, exclaimed the man, as he raised his hand for a high five. Death obliged him, and a black shrouded arm lifted, and a skeletal hand appeared from the sleeve and slapped against the expectant palm of the man. "'Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Jack Goff,' replied Death cordially. "'So, wait, let's back it up, re-re-rewind,' said Jack, and he made a decent impression of a rewinding sound. "'You said I did this? Come on, man, you've got to tell me how that happened so I can do it again!' 
I am afraid it is, quite literally, a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. No! Come on, man! I created flames! Look at this shit, man! It's unreal! And get this! I can't even fucking feel the heat of this bad boy! Watch this, Deathmeister! Jack plunged his right arm into the flames once again and extracted it. His expression was as if he had just discovered this superpower for the first time. There was a noise akin to two huge boulders slowly rolling over rocks as Death rolled his eyes at Jack's Labrador-like enthusiasm. Jack, Jack, calm down. Let me explain, said Death, motioning with his hand for Jack to settle down. No, Mr. Death, come on! You have to tell me how I did it! I want to do it again! Jack is Jack for this! Woohoo! You made the engine explode, because you tampered with it, in order to win the race. Another day of cheating and duplicity, said Death. His response was loud, a sonic boom of explanation which slammed into Jack and made him widen his eyes in surprise. Awesome voice, dude! he complimented. Can you teach me how to do that? No. So wait, all of this is because my engine exploded? Yes. And it exploded because I made some last-minute additions before the race? That's right. So, I'm not like Johnny Storm or something out of the Marvel Avengers? Asked Jack. No. Bummer, replied Jack. And he suddenly looked dejected. The dejection lasted a millisecond before he announced, Still, hell of an explosion, don't you think? He stood grinning and he folded his arms and nodded to himself, looking over his handiwork. Yes, quite the kaboom, agreed Death. Ah, now I get it, said Jack, smiling with realisation. Hallelujah, said Death. You said I did this, and I cannot do it again, and I cannot do it again because my boat is totally trashed by this explosion, yeah? Well, remarked Death, you're not wrong, but you're not entirely right, either. Help me out here, Death Dude. Throw me a bone, requested Jack. This is your last act on the earth, Jack. You see, as usual, you ignored the rules, rode roughshod over regulations, dismissed protocols, and did whatever you wanted. Hey, what can I say? Jack does not hold back. <clears throat> Evidently confirmed death. So, with your usual flagrant disregard for any kind of order, you sought to overpower your engine against the rules of the race, and this is the result. Your speedboat has exploded, and you are about to die. Die? Correct. Me? Die? Yes. You need to understand, Jack, that this is your never moment. You are caught between being alive and being dead. That is why the flames do not burn you. That is why you are not being ripped apart by the explosion. That is why you can put your arm into the flames and feel nothing. Time has been frozen. The world beyond has halted, as you and I stand here exchanging high fives. Jack paused as if weighing the import of what had just been disclosed to him, he gave a slow nod. So, this is where we play chess, yeah? Sorry? asked Death. You know, you and I play a game, so I get to stay alive. That's how it goes, isn't it? Oh, I understand. There then came a noise, not unlike a tsunami, as it heads towards a waiting shore as Death laughed. You are going to choose Battleship or Twister, aren't you? You are thinking of Bill and Ted's bogus journey, replied Death. No, Ingmar Bergman's Seven Seal, where the knight plays chess with Death to save his friends. Awesome film, replied Jack. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that one, answered Death. No, sorry, no chess playing. Shame, I am immense when it comes to the game of chess. None of my friends have ever beaten me, explained Jack. That is because they let you win, added Death. Sure they do, 
What do you like, Death? Always keeping a bit of needle, huh? I like that. Keeps a man on his toes. If you insist. Okay, so no chess. Do I get to make a speech, you know, like uh, Hamlet to Fellatio? Sorry? Duh! Come on, Death! Aren't you meant to know, like, everything? I'm schooling you here, man! Not that I mind. You seem a pretty chill kind of dude. You can come and join me and the girls on my yacht next weekend. It's called Hi, Jack, because that is what everybody sees when they see me. I know everybody around here. I have a few bars on the pier and I dabble with some property development, you know, put some money in a couple of tech startups. Not entirely sure what they do, but something to do with apps. I like to help out, you know. I have the dough so I help others to make some bread. Rattled on Jack. So, I was thinking that I get to make a speech, you know, like the Prince of Denmark keeps doing? That Hamlet guy to his best bro, Felatio. It is Horatio, explained Death. Are you sure, Death? The prof? That's what I call one of my crew, because he's always reading. He told me that Hamlet is always saying deep things, seriously, deep things, to his main man, Felatio, who is a bit of a sucker, because he never really gets to say much himself. Because Hamlet is always giving it the big one about his dead dad and how his mom is doing the nasty with his dad's brother. Not that I think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, hey, I've done a few sister combos in my time. You know where I'm coming from, don't you, Death? You know how it goes. Evidently not, remarked Death. Sure you do. You see my life is for living. If you're not living, then you might as well be dead. And I do some serious living. Got a penthouse on the beachfront of Pacific View when I was just 22. I have the cars, the jet ski. I got my pilot's license when I was 24. Should have been a year earlier, but there were some complications with my instructor. She wasn't meant to fall in love with me, but hey, what can you do, eh, Death? The chicks just dig the jackster. Yes, I understand you have been successful in your short life, Jack, admitted Death. Thanks, man. I just love it all. People, they're just so energizing. They're what I live for. I love everybody. Usually the ladies, but hey, even a dude once in a while. I mean, anything to keep the party going. You know where I'm coming from, Death? I can tell you get me. We're like brothers in arms, riding out here on the ocean, afraid of nothing, champions, pioneers, forging our destiny. Is this the speech? asked Death. This? No, I'm just giving you some background. The sound of rolling boulders ground through the air. I do not mean to be rude. But I do have other matters to be about, Jack. And riveting as it is getting acquainted with you as we stand on the blazing deck of your exploding speedboat, perhaps you might turn your attention to issuing some profound declarations about how you have lived your life. Time to sum it all up, young man, because this is the end. How do you mean? asked Jack, in a puzzled but good-natured way. Well, what do you have to say to that long line, and it is a long line, of women you string along. What? The harem? Oh, they love it, man. A weekend with Jack is well worth sharing. Plenty of Jack to go around, if you know what I mean. Jack winked at death and looked down to his crotch. What about your crew, then? Super cool dudes, great people. I always attach the best to people. What about your family, Jack? You do not see much of them. They worry about you. They have always been concerned that you would end up in something like this. The motorbike crashes, the tombstone being off the cliffs, base jumping and such like. They know you are an adrenaline junkie, but they wanted you to slow down and take responsibility for once. There's plenty of time for that when I'm snowy-haired and I've moved to Florida, grinned Jack. No, Jack, there isn't. This is it. As soon as you have finished, no... That cannot be the case. You will go on like the Duracell bunny if I let you. No, shortly. I am going to conclude this never moment. And then you will die. And you will not be high, Jack, but blown sky high, Jack. Do you understand? Awesome! Up, up, and away, man of steel. It's okay, Death. Keep a tight hold of me, and we will just land in the ocean. And that sexy cake thing you've got going on there will get a bit of a singe, but nothing that a dry clean and a bit of visible stitching cannot solve. I'll hook you up with Marcellus. He's a man when it comes to tailoring. No, you are going to die, Jack. It is the end, your demise, the final curtain. Jack made to speak again and then stopped, a look of horror 
suddenly came across his face. The end? he asked, his voice dropping. The end, confirmed death. No more Jack? No more Jack. Jack's not come back? No, you don't qualify for resurrection. Fuck! 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 He declared, slamming his left fist into his right palm. Death nodded at Jack, finally grasping that his mortality was about to come to an explosive end. I've forgotten to set my box to record the ball game. Can you do me a solid death and slip over there and do it for me? The address is... Enough! declared Death, his voice like a thunderclap of finality. Jack stopped his instructions and looked taken aback. That is immense, man. Show me again, he enthused. Do you ever shut up? asked Death. No, no, don't tell me. I know. I need to be heading to someone else now, Jack. He is an upper lesser type B, a big hitter. So can we wind things up? An upper lesser water? quizzed Jack. Nothing, nothing. Any final words? Any reflections on your life? Anything you would like me to pass on to someone special? Any anecdotes, short ones though, which you care to share about the world for me? Any regrets about what has passed and what has not come to pass by your, admittedly, pretty for life being cut short so early? Are you not upset that you are not going to be able to do the girls, the parties, the holiday, the sports, the shopping, the cars anymore? Hey, Death, I have packed so much in, I have loved every minute of it. It's been a blast. But what about finding some depth, finding some meaning to your life, as opposed to all this skin-deep hedonism? Is that a moisturizer? Is it any good? I can't tell you. You've been keeping the real death thumb to wraps in that black kimono shit, you stylish fucker, laughed Jack. Oh, for the love of a sharpened scythe, muttered death. Right, this is it. The never moment is about to end. Final chance. Time to lay it all bare. No, no, not that, growled death, as Jack went to yank his shorts down. Just ribbing you, Death. Don't want to make you feel all small seeing Big Jack down there, grinned Jack, with his million megawatt smile. You have sixty heartbeats, Jack. Make use of them. So, I'm about to get blown apart by all of this, asked Jack. His face was serious now. He swept an arm at the wall of churning flame. Yes, totally consumed by the flames. An instantaneous death. I see, commented Jack, appearing pensive for the first time in the conversation. What will it be? asked Death. Do your thing, Death. Just, you know, not the face, yeah, remarked Jack, as he circled his admittedly handsome face with his finger. Very well, not the face, agreed Death. Hoo-ha! bellowed Jack. Go for a Death! Death brought forth his adamantine glittering scythe, and as he pulled his arm back to make the executing move to extinguish the life of Jack Goff, he saw Jack stand straight, salute him, smile, and say, Hasta la vista, baby! Death swung the scythe, and the air roared with the violence of the explosion as Jack Goff, the upper lesser type A narcissist, died.